hey folks welcome to the part 2 of this series where we will look how to enable persistence on a kali linux live usb in the first part of this series we have seen how do we create a kali linux live usb for the purpose uh, we have used a kali linux live iso file a usb drive of minimum 4 gb size and a flashing software known as balena hr such kali linux live usb can be used for various purposes such as we can use it as a stand alone kali linux operating system we can explore kali linux without installing it on a pc you can also use this usb to install kali linux operating system on different computers the main advantage of kali linux live usb is that it is portable you can carry it along with you wherever you go you do not need to install it on a pc for exploring or practicing the kali linux available tools you can use the same usb on multiple pcs the host operating system which is already existing on a host machine is not affected whenever we use this kali linux live usb there will be no changes in the host operating system whenever you use this usb then there are certain limitations the main limitation is that there is no persistence on this live usb whenever you reboot the pc a fresh image of kali linux will be loaded meaning the state of kali linux which you have seen when you first time boot from this uh, usb you will get the same state after every reboot if you create some new data on this usb such as some reports which you generate after using the tools or if you have updated the kali linux to latest version then those are also lost after the reboot this is known as non persistence now the solution is to enable persistence on this kali linux live us let us see what are the steps involved in enabling persistence first you have to boot from the kali linux live usb then select the option live system with usb persistence then check the usb drive path then check if the free space is available then create a new partition in this free space then make linux file system on the new partition then create a file named persistence.conf on this new partition and write slash union to this file save the file then reboot the pc and you will see the persistence is now enabled let us now first see the non persistent state of the existing kali linux live usb for the purpose let us boot from this kali linux live usb then create a file on the desktop or anywhere else wherever you want then reboot the pc again then again boot from the same kali linux live usb and check whether the created file is there we will see that the file is lost let us see this practically let us now reboot the pc okay now press f10 to enter bios setup then click on advanced then boot options then select the usb storage boot and save it click on save changes yes and then exit the setup on hp laptop i pressed f10 however on other laptops you need to press other buttons now press f9 to load the boot menu in the boot menu select the option of your pen drive to boot from it and press enter on hp laptop f9 is used to display the boot menu on other laptops it may be different you can check your user manual for entering the bios setup and then 
displaying the boot menu. The options shown in the BIOS setup of different PCs and laptops will be different. So you need to just search for the option to make the USB boot drive as the first boot drive. Now press F9 to load the boot menu. In the boot menu, select the option of your pen drive to boot from it and press enter. Upon successfully booting from the Kali Linux Live USB, Kali Linux Live menu will be visible. There are a number of options in this live menu to boot from. Normally, we press enter on the first option that is live system. This will load the Kali Linux live session. Let us now create a new file on desktop and save it. The new file is now created in the live session. Let us now reboot the system again and again boot from the live USB. Now press F9 to load the boot menu. In the boot menu, select the option of your pen drive to boot from it and press enter. Press enter on the first option again to reload the live session. The file which we just created has disappeared. So now let us reboot the machine again and choose the boot with persistence option. Scroll down to the live system with USB persistence option and press enter. Let us create a file again. Save it on desktop. Restart the system again by choosing the live system with persistence option. We have again chosen the live system with persistence option. After rebooting, we can see the file has disappeared again. That means the option to boot with persistence is available, but the capacity of persistence nor is not inbuilt in the live USB. Open the terminal, type lsblk command. You can see two drives are displayed. The first one is the hard disk of the PC, while the second one is the USB drive from which we have booted. Two partitions are already created, one of 3.6 GB and another a minor participation where Total capacity is 28 GB of the disk. Now let us use the fdisk command to check and modify the partitions on this drive. Type sudo fdisk and the path of your USB. In our case it is slash dev slash sdb. Press enter. The command prompt of fdisk will open. Type p and press enter. To display the existing partitions of this drive. The total size of the drive is 28 GB and two partitions are present SDB1 and SDB2. One partition is of the size of Kali Linux ISO file that is 3.6 GB and another is a minor partition. Now type N on the command prompt and press enter. There will be two options to create a partition type. We will proceed ahead with P, the primary partition. The default is P, so without typing anything, we can press enter. Next partition number, the default is 3. We will go with the default, press enter. The first sector 
we will proceed with the default press enter last sector also we will proceed with default a new partition 3 of type linux and the size of balance 25 gb is now created press w and hit enter to write the changes to this disk now use lsblk command again to check out that the new partition is now created as db3 in this case now let us create a file system on this newly created partition using mkfs command type sudo mkfs dot the extension type ext4 then label of the partition persistence and the path of the usb drive partition press enter wait for the creation of file system of this newly created partition as db3 with label persistence keep the label name as persistence only now create a folder using mkdir command type sudo mkdir dash p slash mnt slash my drive uh, you can create the folder anywhere but i have created in slash mnt with the name my drive now mount the new partition to this directory using mount command type sudo mount slash dev slash sdb3 space slash mnt slash my drive the directory's path press enter the partition is now mounted to this directory now let us create a file with the name persistence.conf and slash space union as a content in it for this purpose type echo double quotes forward slash space union double quotes close space pipe space sudo tee command slash mnt slash my drive slash persistence dot conf and then press enter in one command this will create the persistence.com file and write slash space union as a content in this file using cat command let us just check the content of this newly created file type cat and the path to the file name you can see slash union is written in this file let us now unmount the partition using umount command type sudo umount slash dev slash sdb3 and press enter the partition will now be unmounted let us now reboot the system once you can use the command sudo reboot now and press enter upon reboot we will choose the option to boot with persistence again let us now create a file again on the desktop in this usb with persistence session the file is now created on this desktop let us now reboot the system and load the Kali Linux operating system with USB with persistence option. On reboot, you will observe that the file which we have created is now available there only that means we have successfully 
set up the persistence on this Kali Linux live USB. So just now we have seen how the data which is created in this live USB is now persistent across reboots. But uh, there is still is one limitation that if somehow this USB is lost, then there is a possibility that the confidential reports which you have generated while using the Kali Linux tools for vulnerability assessment and penetration testing gets lost or maybe it is stolen. Uh, there is a chance that it goes into some wrong hands and they may see your confidential data. So in the next part of this series, we will see how do we enable the encryption on this persistent Kali Linux live USB so that even if somebody steals this USB, he will not be able to see what data you have stored in this USB. I hope this was useful. If yes, then please do like and share. Also, let us know if there is any feedback or queries in the comments. Do subscribe the channel to receive the notification about the next part of this series. Thank you.